Alrighty, tidy folks. So you'll notice that on screen, there's a video. And I've got multiple chroma key layers installed because I don't have my green screen down here in Arizona. But my friends asked me to uh, go through this video that a dealership sent them and figure out if the $1,600 the dealership is wanting is worth the $1,600 that the dealership is wanting. So, you're going to hear a little bit of the audio in the background because I also don't have my headphones set up correctly down here. But I tried to make it quiet. So let's go through this video a little bit. And I'm going to pause it and play it. And we'll talk a little bit about what's going on in this video. So we start with my friend's Mazda. You can see there on the little engine cover thing. Little Mazda symbol says Sky Active G for good. Sky Active is cool. It's a very cool technology. Ask me about it sometime. It's freaking cool. Anyway, he's uh, he's got his little you know his, his little sheet here, and he's gonna walk us through the things that he found in the vehicle during his inspection. Perfectly acceptable thing to do. Hey guys, guys working on your car. Check your battery. Battery says good. Um, Air Force first time. Test the battery. Battery says it's good. Scrolls right past us without telling us what good means. Fine, it's good. The customer doesn't care. It's good. Thank you. Good Stopped on the air filter for about a quarter of a second, said it was okay. Given the time frame, it's been about two years, two and a half years, and the fact that there are large particles lodged in the filter, I would personally, on my own vehicles, replace that air filter, and I would suggest that my customers do so as well. I would check the, uh, the dust content so the, the kind of saturation of dust in the filter, standard test for that, drop it on the ground to see how big a poof it gives you. Um, if he thinks it's okay, maybe he's fine with driving vehicles around with reduced fuel mileage and performance. I would, it, they're $20, replace the filter. If you see rocks in the filter, replace the filter. That's, it's fine. Something about crystallization, uh, as far as I know, without some sort of catalyst or major chemical changes to the, the molecule, ethylene glycol doesn't crystallize. Uh, what he's seeing is the remnants of some coolant that somebody spilled whenever they were topping off the reservoir. I imagine probably the most likely situation is it's a two three-year-old vehicle three-year-old vehicle at this point so a three-year-old vehicle you're going to have water evaporation out of your coolant reservoir perfectly normal perfectly natural perfectly acceptable nothing to worry about water evaporates that's what it does someone saw this during one of the normal service intervals your oil change tire rotation what have you and they're like okay well we'll just top it up for them so they topped it up they spilled some. They didn't wash it off. They didn't wipe it off. They left it. It then dried and left this slight residue, which I believe is a uh, leak indicator that a lot of OEMs are putting in their coolants nowadays, which I love. Uh, I don't know if that's exactly what it is, but it acts as a leak indicator, even if it isn't one, and it helps you find the leak easier, and I love it. It's great. But somebody spilled some. They didn't wipe it up. You can see it splashed there. It was splashed in the reservoir. I don't know why you're recommending a coolant flush. Now, if the coolant that Mazda installed in the engine on assembly is not a long-life coolant, it is not an organic anti-corrosion technology or a hybrid organic anti-corrosion technology, HOTS and or OATS, then yes, three years is about the point where you should replace your coolant. I would imagine, though, given that it's a 2021, the coolant installed in the vehicle from the factory is a long-life coolant, i.e. it's a five-year replacement interval. OK, 
okay? You replace the coolant because the corrosion inhibitors break down, nothing else. Water doesn't break down, ethylene glycol doesn't break down under these conditions. It's the corrosion inhibitors, the things that prevent corrosion from setting in on the interior bits of the cooling system, where the coolant comes into contact with it. That's it. The dealership tech should know this. Moving on. He then comes over here to the brake fluid reservoir and points to a fluid level that is perfectly fine and acceptable. You can see the minimum level there at the bottom of his finger, that kind of like white line down there. That's the minimum level. The maximum level sits somewhere up near, closer to that, that top bit where there's the square where the cap sits. The, the, the maximum level is going to be up there somewhere. He will then later mention, which we'll get to when we get to it, but he'll later then mention the brakes. And when he mentions the brakes, I will then talk about the next kind of important detail that should be mentioned about the brake fluid level. He comes over and he says, now we're going to check the timing belt area. Looking down into the engine bay and claiming timing belt areas is much like sitting in the cargo area and saying, let's check the headlights. Yeah, it's in the car and it's somewhere over there in that region. But you're not looking at a timing belt guy. What I imagine he meant to say is drive belt and he just misspoke. I can only hope. Given the track record of this guy so far, maybe that's not the case. Anyway. Now, I'm not any particular expert in uh, this particular model of Mazda, but I've never heard of a drive belt tensioner leaking. If any of you guys have, let me know, uh, because that would be very interesting. As far as I know, drive belt tensioners are springs, which means they're made of steel and aluminum and other things that are metal. Metal doesn't tend to leak. I would suggest the customer... Uh, I Well, as the tech, I would check the condition of the serpentine belt, drive belt, and I would make a recommendation based off of its current condition. I don't see... he, he In the video, he doesn't check the belt. Maybe he did check the belt and it was fine. But again, he sees some seepage that I can't see in the camera image here. And seepage on engines is normal. Leaking is not normal, okay? Seepage happens anytime there is any kind of a liquid. You will get seepage of some kind. You lose water content through your radiator hoses. It evaporates through the hose because the molecule of two hydrogens bonded to one oxygen atom is small enough to travel through the pore of a hose small enough to travel through the crystalline structure of metal, I believe. Regardless, if he's going to make a claim, and he's going to put it on video with the claim, he needs to actually get the camera down there to whatever the heck it is he's trying to claim. I suspect other things are going on that I'm not going to talk about, and I'm not going to make claims to in this video. I will say it to your face if you come and ask me in person. I will tell you exactly what I think is going on. But I'm not going to say this on a video that's going on the internet because reasons. Because I'm not that kind of guy. I will say that uh, the seepage that he's probably seeing is probably from the... Uh, I don't think the power steering system's up there. I think it's on the bottom. Um, it's probably from a valve cover. Or a, uh, 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 probably a valve cover. Could be from an intake, but I really highly doubt it, considering, pretty sure it's a four-cylinder Mazda engine. 
could be wrong. Um, can't really see it with the cover installed, and covers are quite inventive these days. So, seepage is normal. It's probably fine. If you're concerned about it, Mr. Tech Man, clean it off and tell the customer we will check it at the next service interval. Do your front tires for 30 seconds. Recommend front tire. Rears of a 4 or 5. Recommend the tires. Checking the tread depth of the tires with a fancy little meter. I've not seen one of those before. I kind of like that little meter, little electronic guy. I don't like him. I prefer mechanical stuff myself, but it's nifty. Nothing wrong there. Tires are slightly worn-ish, so, you know, whenever they wear, they wear. Replace them. Also checking your front brakes about three and four. Okay, so we're, we're going to return to a thing here in a minute. But he says we're checking the front brakes. They're three and four. Three and four what? Th three and four flashlights. Three and four microphones. Three and four bottles of hot sauce. Anybody want some hot sauce? I made, I made way too much. Three and four. Three and four of what? Okay. Perhaps he's saying three or four, not and four, perhaps it's three or four millimeters. Uh, generally, brake pads are 10 to 14 millimeters. It, it really depends. They, they tend to hover 10 to 14 millimeters. So if we assume 14 millimeters in there, four, that's still close to 30%. I'm not going to do the math. I'm lazy. But if over three years we have worn 70%, 30% remaining is another year, year and a half. It's not yet time to worry about the brakes. I'm sure the wear indicator that is installed on every single brake pad that I have ever seen on any car made after like 1990. I'm sure when it starts indicating and making a squeaky squeaky noise, as is its design, then we could do the brakes, perhaps, do them when they're worn, maybe, instead of preemptively, uselessly, wasting money, wasting time, wasting effort. Okay. Rears are about seven, so big speed in the And the rears are, again, the same kind of seven unit X unknown variable uh, null error error Will Robinson you know seven what guy seven elephants seven skylines seven curtains over your window just saying things that I could like see around me I don't, seven what guy tell me what what you're trying to tell you're trying to tell me information but you're not giving me any information you're just saying random words so on to the thing that I could have mentioned before with the brake fluid level, but I wanted to wait until here. We now know that the brake pads are slightly worn. The fronts probably about 70%, the rears about 25-30%. Overall, that's going to give us, granted the pistons aren't going to be all the same size around all four, but we can make some rough guesstimations. Rough guesstimations tell us that as brake pads wear, the piston will sit further and further out of the caliper bore. When you let your foot off the brake pedal, the fluid does not all return from the caliper back into the brake reservoir, the brake master reservoir. It stays in the caliper. It only moves back far enough to not apply pressure to the rotor to not apply pressure to the brake pads, to apply pressure to the rotor, more specifically. So all of that fluid is being stored in the calipers, and it's staying there. They are the new reservoir position. Rough numbers say that we should be 50%-ish down of total fluid level from 100% filled and brand new parts all the way around. Almost like that's where the brake fluid was in the, re the re reservoir. So we recommend a brake flush. 
Brake flush is generally 30 to 36,000 miles every three years or so. Brake fluid is hydroscopic. It absorbs moisture. The vehicle is in Las Vegas. There's not that much moisture in the air. There is moisture, but there's not that much moisture in the air. You could probably go five years. Personally, I prefer to replace my brake fluid when it starts showing signs of aging, i.e. it gets translucent. Brand new brake fluid dot three dot four is moderately clear. It's it's ninety eight percent clear. Um, you never want your brake fluid to get to the point where it's black and opaque. That is bad. That means there is a very high probability of boiling the fluid in the calipers, and at that point you're not stopping. You have air in your system. You're not stopping. Ask me how I know. So, brake flush possibly. Um, adding any brake fluid to this system, absolutely not. Brake systems are sealed unless you have a leak or you know that you have replaced parts that required you to drain fluid from the system. Do not top off your brake fluid. Find the problem first. Are we clear? Find the problem first. Okay, so his talking about the brake fluid level is a moot point period altogether. Completely moot. Brake flush, possibly. It looks slightly brownish in the reservoir. But you can't always tell because sometimes the reservoir colors the brake fluid. Because it's another media light has to pass through before passing through the brake fluid. And then it has to pass through it again to come out and interact with your eyeballs. Pull the cap, look inside. That's how you tell the condition of the brake fluid. There's actually meters that you can use to tell the condition of the brake fluid, uh, water absorption meters. Kind of nifty. I've never even used one. I usually go by visual condition, which is perfectly acceptable. Um, so yeah, the brake pads are fine. The brake fluid is, for now, probably fine. I would recommend it in the next year. So alert the customer and tell them priority is in the next year. Shops don't do that enough. They don't prioritize maintenance and repairs. Okay. Also, there's a book and it has service intervals. Why is the Mazda technician not using the book with the service intervals? Continuing. Exhaust. He says something about rear suspension mumbling, rear suspension, blah, 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 blah. Um, well, the rear suspension guy is not comprised of just two shocks. There are bushings, there are control arms, there are, I don't know if this guy has rear toe adjustments or not, but there might be toe adjusters. He, I did not see him set the camera down, like on a table or something, and try to wiggle the wheels to make sure there's no play in the bushings or the arms or whatever mechanisms hold the wheel to the body. He just kind of looked roughly sort of in the direction of some shocks and said they were fine. Moving on. Exhaust. Okay, so I'm going to rewind this a little bit because I distinctly remember him saying let me let me turn my volume up real quick you guys are going to get it twice coming through the mic probably but okay right there right there that part right there converter unless something in physics has drastically changed it might be a post converter okay i'll, I'll get i'll give him okay i will give him that New vehicles have two catalytic converters sometimes, maybe many times. You have a pre-converter and a post-converter. I, I will give him that post-converters are a thing, and maybe, maybe that's what this is. I don't see a heat shield on it. It also doesn't look like it gets much hotter than the rest of the exhaust system, i.e. the pipe that it is connected to. I would posit that that is probably a resonator. In front of which is what appears to be a muffler. He also then doesn't say anything about this thing up here to the right, just above my head there. Right, right, right. 
there, which is a catalytic converter. You can tell because it's got kind of that funny shaped shield on it and an O2 sensor protruding from the side of it, indicating that it is being monitored, monitored for its efficiency. He then proceeds to look at things that, granted the bushing, you could possibly probably tell when it's gone bad because it'll be dry rotted and cracked and or have space in it where there shouldn't be space. But he looks at the bottom of a sealed ball joint installed in a control arm. That you're not going to see anything there that's going to tell you anything's worn. What you're going to see is the boot that is currently at the bottom left two thirds of the screen so you got that you got the bolt right there sticking out and then just below that you got that kind of lumpy thing near the bottom of the frame that's the boot for for the ball joint you don't check the ball joint by just looking at the boots like that that's one indicator that it should be replaced if it's a sealed unit and the boot is damaged yes you need to replace the ball joint but that's not the only indicator i have seen ball joints worn out with their boots intact. It happens. Sometimes. And that's it, guys. If this is the quality we can expect from dealerships, it's no wonder uh, standard automotive shops are doing their best to swindle people out of their money it's despicable i don't know if that's what this guy's doing or not i don't know if he's just he sounds fairly young to me perhaps he's untrained and or perhaps he's been told that you need to try to find every single penny that you can find that to put on a put on a thing uh, put on a, a pm checklist or whatever which shops actually do it's called scare tactics the more things are on there the more things the customer thinks is really need to be done and the more likely they are to be able to upsell those those services to people it's despicable it is absolutely completely 100 percent despicable that shops do this i get it guy you're in the business to make money i get it i do but you're also in the business of putting people's lives in your hands. Everything you touch is a new possibility for something to break where it would not have broken before. Right? And, and if you torque it all back down 100% correctly, if you do the job 100% to the book, the chances of that are very near to zero. If you do it correctly, it's very near to zero. How many technicians do you think? <laughs> How many mechanics? I'm not even going to use the word technicians. How many mechanics do you think are going through the book and actually using a torque wrench? You heard the background there. Dugga, dugga, dugga. That's what happens in shops. Don't be recommending things that don't absolutely need to be done. Don't be recommending things that need to be done a year from now. You can alert the customer, say, hey, we found this, uh, perhaps in the next year you're going to want to think about replacing it, these are the things that can happen, blah, blah, blah. If people actually had the information and the people actually knew the dangers of driving with some of these things failed, they would be more than happy to do the job. They'll go find the money to do the job and get it done right. But you don't need to use scare tactics on on just normal unsuspecting customers with a brand new free it's a 2021 man there's no need for this car to have sixteen hundred dollars worth of work granted i could find three grand worth of work so the guy's slacking technically if we're going by that measure but don't do that don't 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 over inflate your uh inspection notes just to try to make sales it's despicable and it's disgusting and shame on you 
whichever dealership this is in Las Vegas, shame on you. And I hope you guys have a very nice night. And I will see you later.